Hi. I guess you can hear me. So uh, my name is Bastien Legra. I am a um, cloud solution engineer based in Google Paris office. I'm working with uh, Christophe right there <laughs> that you just saw before me. And uh, we cover together so Southern Europe, so France, Italy, and Spain, and Portugal. And uh, in this session, so it's a 20-minute session, we're going to cover mobile from a more technical perspective. So we're going to cover cloud endpoints. Maybe you heard about it. So it's a feature of App Engine. And we're going to cover as well a uh, cloud mobile backend that has been announced at Google I.O. And I will show an extract of the video of uh, Google I.O. Uh, I have this. So first, uh, cloud endpoints. For those who don't know already, so the idea with cloud endpoints is to uh, accelerate the time to market for you, for your uh, mobile applications or web applications as well in uh, HTML5 by uh, auto, let's say, auto coding the layer that connects your mobile app to our backends. So you just have to focus on the UI, on the user experience, on the features of your game, and don't worry about the plumbery, you know, that will uh, access the backend's uh, services. And we do that for uh, Android and iOS. The other topic, so the mobile backend starter, and we're going to go uh, deep dive into these features, is a, a set of APIs of services in uh, App Engine that will also help you do stuff like uh, authentication, uh, messaging, so push from the cloud, continuous queries, we'll have a short video on that, and uh, again, help you be more productive and focus more on your app rather than on the technical underground. So first video, it's one minute, it's an um, interview of uh, Fred Bauer and Mandy Waite, who are a uh, developer relationship, also a uh, Googlers, based in uh, the US, and uh, she's in London, I guess, telling what is the strategy with uh, cloud backend. So for that, because we don't have an output there, I will try to use the mic, hoping we won't have a feedback. So how viable or recommended would it be to build a backend service for mobile apps around Google Cloud endpoints? Uh, right, OK. So I think really that's probably the biggest use case general sense of it, rather than the admin sense of backends. Yep. Uh, if you want to build an application uh, that will provide resources and uh, services that are consumed by mobile, uh, mobile devices, then cloud endpoints will do that for you out of the box. Uh, <coughs> I think pretty much we covered most of that in the slides, but the documentation is pretty extensive, both in Java and in Python. Uh, so if you want to find out more about how to use cloud endpoints, uh, check that out. And there's also a Google IO tool. There was, yes. So you can actually get some, a lot of information from Google I.O. sessions. Very good. Yeah. All right, your okay. turn. My turn. I'm not sure you Yeah, I'm not sure you have heard very well, but that you had the captions. So as you understand, the idea is to really help startups uh, being more productive and so to try more, try more applications, more games uh, on Android and iOS. iOS. So let's talk about sorry. So where uh, Christophe left you at, which is the, the cloud endpoint. So as I said, uh, the idea is that um, all the essential components that you are, that all mobile application needs uh, are basically auto-coded. When I say auto-coded, it's like a wrapper, you know, is coded. So you just have to, if you are building uh, your own APIs in the App Engine backend, then you will uh, manage with the cloud backend to expose these APIs. Uh, and also have the client side that will be written by uh, the App Engine Toolkit, so you can directly start from that. And the development process is quite simple. So you write your API backend first, that's where you need to start, like the data design and, uh, and of course the methods you want to expose. Then what you can do is uh, either annotate your IP API uh, backend code, because this is the annotation that will uh, help the toolkit generate the wrapper. Or you can use uh, the plugin for Eclipse if you are Eclipse developers. And by the way, who is an Eclipse developer here? Yeah, 20% of you. So the, the two options are here. Then what you want to do is to, uh, to generate the client library. 
of course, so from which you will then write your uh, mobile app. And again, two solutions. You can use the SH tool, endpoints.sh, or use the plugin uh, directly within Eclipse. OK? And, and then, as a, for the last step, you can uh, start working on your, on your client app. And as I said, focus on your UI, on the business logic the, on the client side of your application. So now, some extract of the Google I.O. slides as well. So they were building uh, an application live in the demo, and I encourage you to uh, go have a look at this video. It's a 30 minutes long video, and I will show you after the link where uh, the geeks uh, want to find each other, so using maps, etc. cetera. Um, and the idea here, as you can see, the application on, on, on the left is using the uh, mobile backend starter client directly connected and uh, the Android, Android client ID. So the idea is that you also help identify your application with the backend to connect each other. What you can do as well, so now I'm, not, I'm more focusing on the backend itself, is that uh, you can directly uh, store your uh, application data in uh, two kinds of storage. I don't know if you can read, but the, there is the App Engine Data Store, which we have now renamed, by the way, as Cloud Data Store, which is now from which you can connect from anywhere. And uh, the, the idea is that uh, we now have even four storage mechanisms uh, with Google Cloud Platform. You have this Cloud Data Store, which is a NoSQL ultra scalable data store. You can store terabytes of objects if you want. Here we have. Um, also, the Google Cloud Storage, which is object storage, more like a file system. And we will have a session on that this, af this afternoon at, at 3, I think. That will be me again. I'll do a quick demo. For those who don't know, there is also Cloud SQL, which is a MySQL 5.5 managed uh, in our uh, cloud data centers. And you get directly uh, access you, you know, using SQL queries and the port 3306 from Compute Engine today. And at the end, like, because I wanted to focus more on storage, there is also another storage mechanism, which is more in the compute engine world. And we will discuss about compute engine a lot this afternoon. I will do a demo of that as well. It's called the Perston disk. So Perston disk is a like, file system mounted network share that you can share across up to 16 machines. And, uh, and you can format yourself, and you can use that to boot your machines. Very convenient and scalable. Then, uh, other features that you may need from uh, the cloud backend for your application is uh, asynchronous processing. So you can use task queues. Task queues is uh, one of the top components in App Engine. So you can directly create your task, ta uh, store them, and they will execute so you can run your batches. I don't know why I'm using my keyboard. <laughs> So then the, uh, the push notification, that's something also really key. This is something we've been using a lot at Google um, since day one, because for Android, you know, with uh, Google Play, so former Android market, when we wanted to push uh, application updates, so your phone is going to download them automatically, um, the idea is that we've been using that type of uh, technology. So cloud messaging. So the, the, the phone stays quite connected, if you want, with the cloud, so you can push from your app backend to the users a notification. That's very useful, um, uh, let's say, in a gaming environment or if people want to chat. We use it as well for Google Hangout, renamed. It was a Google Talk before. You know, we cannot predict when the notification will come. And um, cloud messaging is, use, is, a, is a right toolkit for that. So you can really push uh, messages, technical messages, to the app instances you get. And we have uh, also um, worked on the iOS world. So as you can see here, Apple Push Notification Service. Ah, here. Apple Push Notification Service, this, which is similar, so the APN, similar to push also messages from the backend to iOS, iOS instances. Another example, so I hope uh, in the next video uh, I will show, uh, you can hear, so you understand how it works as well. Uh, but you see still uh, on the right side, on the right side, the, the mobile backend starter and the, uh, the client library on the left, showing how you can do that kind of uh, registration and push messages directly. Then uh, serving and processes images. If you are in uh, developing, I don't know, a camera for the phone or a game that uh, needs uh, image processing, processing, like in a social network, that's also a service we provide. Uh, on cloud platform, so something you can directly use from cloud storage to store the statics, 
uh, images, and then you can process them in the uh, image service, you know, to uh, convert them from a format to another, to do, uh, I don't know, color modifications, stuff like this, or push lighter images to your uh, phone, if when you want to have like a mosaics, you know, thumbnail pictures. So that's the type, usually, uh, of usage we see on uh, image services. Another one uh, is the, uh, the, the search. So of course, we do a lot of things in search. And um, now App Engine, so I, I think it was in App Engine in March version, we now uh, provide so full text search. And uh, that's also something very use, uh, useful in the mobile use case. So you can do full text search on, on the back end directly from the, the phone as well. Okay. And geo proximity, again, if you want to, uh, to search in a geolocalization context. Uh, the task, we were talking about the task use, now there is also the schedule task. If you need to have schedule, cast, schedule tasks for your application, like, I don't know, recurrent updates, um, or if you, there is a message that you need to pass at a certain time in the day to your users, that's also a component of App Engine you may want to use in a mobile scenario. Um, now, I, I heard a question this morning of someone asking what's the integration between an app engine and a compute engine. So we have been working on that. And the idea is that if you have a heavy task that uh, you don't want to run in the using app engine backend, but you need really a server to do that or a uh, rack of servers, you can do that from compute engine and orchestrate it from app engine. So the idea here, that's what we call VM engine, is that you can imagine you create a task and this task is going to be sent to a cluster of uh, GC machines that you can start from App Engine, execute the task, send back the result, and then shut down the machines. Maybe you've heard that uh, at I.O. that uh, we now do uh, sub-hour billing so on Compute Engine, so that's very useful. If you have like a really heavy like video processing task for which you need a heavy uh, CPU server, you can really imagine the, ta the task is generated by App Engine, executed by Compute Engine, result is sent back, and App Engine destroys the machine. Very uh, convenient. And all that is in integrated using task queues. Continuous query also uh, is quite interesting. So I, I would like to uh, show an extract of the, um, of the IO session on that uh, so, um, so you can better understand what, what was the uh, the use case and how it works because it's a five-step scenario, uh, and that's I think very interesting uh, also for uh, for gaming or mobile apps in general. So we're going to try uh, we got with the sound, but worst case there are captions. Okay, it's a two-three minute video and there are captions. And I think I already no, let's try that way. Uh, well, I'll tell you about the continuous query capability that we're going to use uh, to do that. So this is a feature of the mobile backend starter project that uses several App Engine features as well. Uh, there's a API in preview called Perspective Search, and what that does is anytime data comes in that matches the parameters of your query, then App Engine will notify your app on the server side uh, that some matching data has been found. So we're going to use that to our advantage here. Anytime a new location update gets posted, then our app will get notified on the server side. And the mobile backend starter project takes that further and will send a GCM message to our app running on the phone as well. So the flow looks like this. In step one, a new location update comes from the phone, uh, gets put in the server. In step two, uh, the app engine Perspective Search API notifies the server side part of our mobile backend starter app. Uh, that sends a GCM message, Google Cloud Messaging, to the client in step three. Then in step four, uh, we re-query to get the latest data from the server. And then finally, uh, step five, we draw the markers on the map with that most recent data. So I'm going to go now write the code that actually does this in our app. So we'll again take a look into our map activity. And the first thing we want to do is write a query. I'm just going to scroll down a little bit here. Uh, that will go out and get the geek locations. So let me paste in some code here, query geeks, and show you what that looks like. 
the, all the capability that I just described on that slide is called continuous queries, is what we're calling it right now in this project. And so the first part of our uh, query is to write a handler that will receive the results. So we have an on-complete handler, and we're just going to draw markers. Simple enough. Uh, then to actually register the query, we call get cloud backend dot clear all subscription. Now, the notion of a continuous query, you can subscribe to queries on the server. So we want to clear any existing subscriptions and then set up a new one. So we say new cloud query uh, for kind geek. We're just going to get the top 50 geeks sorted in order of the most recent location updates. And we're going to make the scope future and past. So again, this is a feature of the mobile backend starter that lets you say, I want to be notified of future matches to this query as well as present. And if you think about the amount of code that you would have to write to do that all manually, setting up GCM, uh, keeping track of this data is actually a very nice convenience. It stopped there. So it was to better illustrate you know, the, uh, this concept. So this is a slide uh, Christophe was showing before, but now you, you maybe more understand how all the pieces of the puzzle comes together. So it's a um, recap uh, of all these features, as you can see. So that's why we really believe um, in that kind of architectures. App Engine is a great uh, orchestrator. So it's like the chef or puppet if you, if you use that kind of technology and uh, to talk to all the services. We think that um, we've doing a, a lot of integration between these services. You know, the, the team in Google, okay, it's hundreds of uh, engineers we have uh, in West uh, US and, uh, and in Europe. Uh, but the idea is to have a common set of APIs. And you will see in the, uh, in the demo uh, this afternoon on Computer Engine, I will uh, show the, um, what is a project, how the console looks like, and how you can activate your services, and how you can connect each uh, together uh, do, do when you, it comes to design and build your project. So. In this recap, you see, so App Engine is talking to, the, to your devices, whether they are Android or iOS. Is. The, it can talk directly from here and push to Android devices using Google Cloud Messaging technology or using Apple push notification technology. So that's the two way you can communicate from the cloud to the uh, devices. That was the monetization uh, piece, uh, AdMob, that um, Christophe mentioned earlier. You have all these. App Engine features we've been uh, covering this morning in the App Engine session that are, of course, useful in a mobile development scenario. The task queues we were mentioning earlier and uh, that you can use to uh, do some batch processing on Compute Engine for heavy loads, schedule tasks, search APIs, and logs APIs as usual on, uh, on App Engine that you can also imagine because now we are plugging together BigQuery, which is the, our big data engine and some other part of Google, like Google Analytics, Google AdSense, the logs here from App Engine. So you can also analyze uh, the, uh, the way all your users are playing or are using your application to better understand what works, what doesn't work in an application so you can optimize it. Whether it's difficult in linearity in a game to make sure people are not stuck in level four because uh, there is a challenge that was may maybe too much uh, difficult for the user or if it's a feature that no one uses. So that's a great way using the logs and BigQuery to uh, detect you know, that kind of optimization you should do on your application. And if you are very hungry, <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much.